safety. 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 What is safety? With more and more cars on the roads, there are more and more accidents, more and more people injured, and more and more people killed. What are we to do about it? Take care, supervise, introduce new legislation? Of course. But above all, develop and improve. Before introducing a vehicle onto the market, a manufacturer like Citroën smashes it in every imaginable way. Say to design, is dealt with systematically and scientifically. Safety features can be divided into two separate categories, primary safety and secondary safety. It is secondary safety that becomes applicable as soon as an accident occurs. It can be considered as all those features that limit the effect of an impact on the occupants of a car. To study this effect, we often use full-size dummies called Oscars fitted with many different measuring instruments. Every experiment is filmed. The vehicle bodies are marked out in squares so that the nature of the distortion that occurs can be more rapidly observed. The object of these experiments is to determine how the survival space in which the car's occupants are sitting can be maintained intact. One must also determine how one can absorb a large part of the shock wave and thus obtain deceleration figures that are biologically acceptable. This is done, for example, by using bodywork that has areas on it of different distortion rates, with a rigid passenger compartment to protect the occupants who are obviously retained by safety belts. Really substantial items of equipment are used for this purpose. Dynamic rockers, impact rams, catapults, and electronic measuring equipment. Energy absorbers have been designed which consist in the main of hollow components packed with rigid polyurethane foam. Experiments have been undertaken with the airbag, a shock absorbing balloon which instantly inflates on impact. Safety features during an accident are a good thing. They are essential. But safety before is probably an even better thing. These are the active or primary safety features. They are the ones that, in many cases, permit the accident to be avoided entirely. They affect the basic qualities of the car. And are studied in cars that are real mobile laboratories. Tirelessly, men check, men observe, men measure. Then they modify and improve.
The testers cover thousands of kilometers and subject their cars to hell. They torture them without respite, cornering, handling tests, high-speed chicanes, and here is the result. Perfect boat holding, accurate steering, and a car that doesn't deviate by a millimeter from its course, which has an immediate and accurate response to the slightest movement of the controls. This too, this in fact, first of all, is safety. A hundred, a thousand, ten thousand brake applications at different speeds. Four people, fifty at sixty km per hour, with a full complete air refroidment between each brake. Not only must the brakes respond immediately, slow down the vehicle effectively and keep it on a straight line, but the discs must not overheat under intensive use conditions. A good suspension system should keep the wheels in contact with the ground no matter what the state of the road. Adherence must be maintained under all circumstances, even over the most irregular of road surfaces, and none of these repeated impacts should be transmitted through to the occupants of the car. For these tests, Citroën have available special tracks, which would have a roadworks engineer howling with horror at the sight of them. The independently suspended wheels follow the profile of the ground without rebound. The bodywork remains stable, held effectively in the horizontal position by the suspension system. Ridging is the worst of all road surfaces. It could have been designed as a car breaker. The ridges on the ground vibrate the wheels and cause the suspension and the tyres to operate at their extreme limits. It transmits vibrations throughout the entire vehicle, the steering wheel can be shaken right out of the driver's hands, the windscreen wipers and direction indicators switch on by themselves. For a car, the ridged surface test is the equivalent of going through the sound barrier. One test follows another without respite. The multiple test track, obstacles, the humpback for example. The weatherproofing test. The car is driven at various speeds through both fresh water and salt water for corrosion tests. Good road holding characteristics should be capable of coping with the most unexpected of situations.
Even if a tyre is suddenly deflated by a sharp or large object on the road, the vehicle should still continue to move in a straight line. Few cars are capable of this. This is a front tyre blowout test. At a given signal, a knife blade immediately tears the tyre. The vehicle doesn't pull to one side, the driver should be capable of braking. He can even let go of the steering wheel. These guinea pig cars are often made to climb both empty and loaded, inclines of one in four. And even one in three. A very important question is the layout of the driving controls. Adjustable steering wheel, adjustable seat, fitting well round the driver's body, the safety belt. Should an impact occur, this acts on the driver in the same way as the brakes act on the car. All the controls are within easy reach. A wheel that's easy to turn. It does half the work itself. Every detail counts. For example, the driver's night vision is improved by means of headlights that swing with the steering wheel and thus shine round corners. Safety also affects other people. Cutting down, on the nuisance value of the car. Its noise, and especially its polluting effect, is another of the manufacturer's duties. Continually, the cars, in complete form, or unit by unit, are studied by every imaginable means. This is the cost of safety built in to present-day vehicles and the vehicles of tomorrow. However, this is not enough. Safety is also the business of each driver. This part is neither primary nor secondary. It is primordial. Safe cars in the hands of safe drivers will be a danger to nobody. Simply, the wonderful individual instruments of liberty that they should be.